My name is Pastor Marlon. This is the Radcliffe Cathedral. We're building God's kingdom in you. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. If you like what you see here, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So at the Radcliffe Cathedral, we say, we say, we're building God's kingdom in you. Go in victory, go in peace, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's March 10th, 2024. Welcome to online worship at the Rockaway Cathedral. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Whether you're just having a look or seeking a place to worship, we are delighted to have you here. And though we may not be able to meet together physically, that is not going to stop us from rallying together spiritually. Join us online for a time of worship and a message from Deacon Wendy Phillips. Wendy Phillips was raised in a Christian family by her parents, John Phillips, a pastor, bishop, and church planter, and her mother, Pearl Phillips, in the island country of Trinidad. She was led to the Lord by her mother, Pearl, and she gave her life to the Lord at the tender age of eight. Wendy graduated cum laude from York College, CUNY, with a Bachelor of Science degree and she attended North Carolina Central University School of Law. After graduating, she moved back to New York where she was admitted to practice law. Wendy began working as an administrative law judge and ALJ in 1997. As an ALJ, she presides at administrative hearings concerning resolving issues of fact and regulatory practice. Today, as a supervising administrative law judge, she uses her God-given wisdom and judicial demeanor to conduct fair and impartial hearings and to issue legally sound and binding decisions. Wendy is also co-founder and CEO of a new, exciting, and blessed virtual ministry called Instant Prayer. She is an arbitrator and a certified biblical counselor and author of two books entitled The Preacher's Dozen, and understanding arbitration. Wendy loves the Lord and she serves him with gladness as a deacon at the Sweet Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church in Albany, New York. Join us as we welcome the gospel duo Melody and Harmony.
in the likeness of you. We will never approaching the Lenten season. Wednesday, February 14th was Ash Wednesday. Lenten season is the Christian season of spiritual preparation before Easter. It begins on Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Saturday, which will be March 30th this year. Christians use this period for fasting and praying. Different denominations have their own special practices. However, both Catholic and Protestants celebrate Lent. The fast is usually 40 days. It is a solemn season leading up to Jesus' death and resurrection on Easter Sunday. Special holidays like Good Friday and Holy Saturday take place in Holy Week beginning Sunday, March 24th and ending Saturday, March 30th. Easter Sunday is a glorious celebration of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Rockaway Cathedral is a nonprofit organization that is seeking to win souls for the Lord in the Far Rockaway community. We especially want to make a difference in the lives of those who are often disenfranchised. However, we need your support to get there. 
Your act of kindness can be a lifesaver for someone. Remember, richness is not necessary, but willingness is. Please visit our website at www.therockawaycathedral.com. Click on the blue Donate tab at the bottom of the page, then click Make a Donation. We are also asking that you continue to support us by viewing our service once a week. We're now on Cash App. You can send your donations to cash tag Rockaway Cathedral. We thank you for your partnership and continued support. God bless you, Rockaway Cathedral. God bless you. Wait, don't log out. Don't change the YouTube channel. You are in the right place at the right time. But you're probably saying, well, where is Pastor Marlon, right? Well, my name is Wendy Phillips. I am CEO and co-founder of a really great virtual online ministry called Instant Prayer. And your pastor, Pastor Marlon, asked me to deliver this message to you today. So come on in, get yourself some coffee, get your Bible and sit down and relax and let us hear what God has in store for us today. And as Pastor Marlon always says, we're building God's kingdom in you. Amen. Join us in experiencing the joy of singing to the Lord with the gospel duo, Melody and Harmony. Savior, Lord, and King, you are master, creator of everything, reliable to you, all praise we bring, God of creation, you didn't spare a thing, justified, glorified are you, magnified, the earth will honor you, purified to me, that's what you do, amplify this praise is all Allow for you. me to be a vessel for you, making sure your love always shines through. So all may know I'm gonna tell the world All about you Triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit too Glorious, gracious God Awesome in all your ways The rock in whom my faith Will remain I wanna serve you All of my days choices I make, oh every step that I take, should be directed by you, so I'll wait, whoa, oh, 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 whoa, oh, 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 whoa, oh, 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 I will forever be dependent on you, cause you're the choices I make, oh every step that I take, should be directed by you, Jehovah Jireh, I want to serve you all of my days, and I want to please you, I want to please you, all the choices I make, oh every step that I take, should be directed by you. Choice. 
And so again, my name is Wendy Phillips. I am an administrative law judge and I am CEO of Instant Prayer. And I'm really grateful that Pastor Marlon Curtin asked me to speak to you today. To all of you, the friends, members, ministers of the Rockaway Cathedral, I bring you greetings. To, Ma to Pastor Marlon, I bring you greetings. And to all of the pastors, bishops, all of my fellow laborers in the gospel of Jesus Christ, greetings from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To my family, my children, and to my siblings, including Pastor Esther Phillips Dwyer, Pastor Elton Phillips, and Reverend Audrey Phillips Jackman, greetings to you, greetings. And to my pastor, Pastor Elgin Joseph Taylor Sr. of the Sweet Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church, I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord. And yes, brothers and sisters, I do have a word from the Lord for you today. But first, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you today, Lord, to first of all say thank you. Father, I come in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, I'm thankful for this opportunity where we can just sit and discover more about you, where we can learn about you. I pray that in everything that is said today, that you get the glory, Lord, and that you get the honor. And I pray that this message today is going to uplift someone, is going to help someone as they journey through life. And all of this, I pray in Jesus' name, amen, amen. So, you know, as I said, this is Women's History Month, and we're going to take a look at a couple women who have had a great impact on the world. And so the theme or the title of my message today is Wake Up, Wake Up. And the scripture verse is taken from Judges chapter 5, verse 12, the A portion. And I'm reading from the New International Version, and that says, wake up, Deborah, wake up, wake up. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. So in this message, uh, we're going to first look at an Old Testament prophet called Deborah, Deborah. Now, in the Old Testament times, we see the children of Israel going through cycles of blessings and rebellion. God would give them a holy and a righteous leader, and they would see a season of blessings, but then they would start becoming complacent, and they would begin living in sin and worshiping idols and strange gods. And as a result of their sins, they would go through a period of oppression. And then they would cry out to God and God would deliver them through a judge that he chose. So the Israelites, they would go through these cycles, right? First of apostasy and then deliverance. And God would choose a judge to deliver his people from their enemies. And the judges were usually military leaders, not actual judges who dealt with the law. And uh, the judges would instruct the people uh, based on what God told them. And they were considered the mouthpiece of God to the people. But in Judges chapters 4 and 5, we see for the first time, God appointed a woman to be the judge. And this judge is the only woman judge named in the Old Testament. And her name was Deborah. Now, Deborah was a really dynamic woman. And she played a really significant role in the history of God's people. She was a woman of great wisdom, revelation, and discernment. 
and she heard from the Lord. She clearly heard from the Lord. And, and so scripture doesn't tell us why God chose Deborah or how he chose her, but we know that God will call whomever he will. And so here's Deborah, right? She's a married woman. She has a husband. She's a mother. She's a prophet. And she's a woman of prayer and of great courage. She's a woman of great authority, but she's also a military strategist and a songwriter and a singer. And she was able to balance all of these roles together. And she was blessed with wisdom. The Bible said that she would sit under a palm tree, which was called the palm tree of Deborah. And there she would dispense wisdom as the children of Israel would come to her to have her uh, declare judgment and settle their disputes. And so Judges chapter four takes us on the journey with Deborah as she follows God's calling and she's used as an important part of God's plan to deliver the Israelites from their enemy, the Canaanites. And so the story begins uh, in Israel and, and this chapter tells us that the Israelites were oppressed by an evil king, a wicked king named Jabin for 20 years. And this king, he had a really huge army consisting of 900 iron chariots. And his captain was a man named Sisera. And the people were oppressed by King Jabin, but they cried out to God and God heard them. He had compassion with them and he chose Deborah, who with Barak, would defeat the enemy and deliver his people. And the Bible says that one day, Deborah clearly heard the voice of God call her. And the voice said, wake up, Deborah, wake up, wake up. And then God told her to call Barak, who was a ruler in Israel at that time, and to tell him that the Lord God of Israel commanded him to get together 10,000 men and slay the Canaanite army. And that God would deliver Sisera, the captain of that army, into his hands. So Deborah did exactly what God told her to do. She called Barak and she told him exactly what God told her. But Barak declined. He declined and he, he refused to go without her. The Bible says that he said, if you go with me, I'm going to go. But if you don't go with me, I'm not going. And so Deborah said to him, I'll go with you. But she said, because of the road on which you're going to going to lead, the glory is not going to be for you. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Meaning, because he had that response, God was going to cause the defeat of Sisera, not because of him, but because of a woman. And so noticing his concern, Deborah continued telling him, Go up. Come on, we could do this. The Lord has given you this Sisera and his army. He has already done it. He has already gone ahead of you. So Barak did what he was told. He got the 10,000 men together. And with Deborah, they went out and they slayed the entire army of the Canaanites. And there was not, the Bible says there was not one man left standing. But Sisera got off his chariot and he fled by foot and he sought refuge in the tent of a woman named Jael. And so Jael assured him, you know, she said, I'd hide you. She gave him some milk and she covered him up. And the Bible says that when he went to sleep, she took a nail 
and a hammer and she killed him. And so although Barak and the army destroyed the king and destroyed the army, Deborah's prophecy was correct because the Sisera was not slain by Barak, but he was slain by a woman, Jael. And so after this victory, the Bible says that Deborah and Barak, they composed a song and they started singing. They started celebrating like there was no tomorrow. Because when God fulfills his promise to us, we should remember to sing. We should remember to give praise and we should remember to give him all of the glory. And so they put this song together and that so song recounted all of the events of how God showed up for them in this battle. So the next woman I'd like to talk to you about is a woman called Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We all know her. She was affectionately referred to as the notorious RBG by her supporters. And she served as an associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States from 1993 to 2020. Now, Ruth was raised by a family that observed Jewish tradition and rituals, and she attended synagogue while she was young. And in her career, Ruth Bader Ginsburg faced many obstacles because she was a woman. Um, she, but she also had many successes, and she was the first in many different categories. She was the first Jewish woman to serve on the Supreme Court. She was the first person to serve on both the Columbia and Harvard Law Reviews. She, was the she tied for first place in her graduating class from Columbia Law School. And she was first tenured, the first female tenured at Columbia Law School. But despite her excellent credentials, she struggled to find employment as a lawyer because of her gender and because of the fact that she was a mother. And although she was hired by Rutgers School of Law as an assistant professor in 1963, she was asked by the dean to accept a lower salary because her husband had a good paying job. And when she became pregnant with her second child, she felt forced to wear oversized clothing for fear that her employer would find out about her pregnancy and she would lose her job. But Ruth persevered. And in 1980, she was appointed to the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia in Washington, D.C., and in 1993, she was nominated to the Supreme Court of the United States, where she served until she died in 2020. And although Ruth faced so many insurmountable obstacles, she had tremendous, she made tremendous contributions to the court and to the country as she fought tirelessly for women's rights and for gender equality. Now, I picked these two women, and I didn't pick them because I'm an administrative law judge, but I picked them because they are really important and they can teach us some real important lessons that we can take away that will help us with our lives. The first lesson that we can take away from these two women is that we need to be obedient to God. When he calls us, we need to be obedient and we need to answer. He has plans for us that we may not be able to understand. And hearts, however, can be changed. Lives can be changed if we do what he's asking us to do. So let me ask you, what is God calling you to do? Maybe it's about starting that business that you've been thinking about. Maybe it's to volunteer at a church or at a community center, 
Or maybe it's to start that ministry that you've been thinking about. Well, how would you know that God is calling you to do that? Well, you would know it because you keep hearing it. It keeps coming up in your mind. And maybe God is telling you to wake up. Wake up. This is your time. So take that step, ladies. Take that step. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says that you should be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. The other thing that we can learn from these women is courage. We have to be courageous. Don't be afraid. Be bold. Remember the saying that God does not call the qualified, but he qualifies those that he calls. And so doing something out of your comfort zone may cause you to uh, maybe just get a little bit nervous, but don't be, okay? Because if you have courage, he is going to bring you through. If he is leading you to take a step or to make a move, he is going to give you everything that you need to accomplish what he's calling you to do. And the other thing that we can learn from these women is to have faith and don't waver in your dreams. Now, we may not always know what road what the road ahead may look like. But we only need to remember that God will faithfully guide us and lead us if he's calling us to do that thing that, you're, that we're talking about. So, but you have to have faith. And what is faith? Hebrews 11 and 1 says that faith is the substance uh, or the assurance or the confidence of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So have faith in God that he is going to complete it. He is going to bring you through. He's going to give you all that you need to do that thing that he's calling you to do. And remember that faith without action is pointless, right? So you've got to get in there. Remember Deborah, right? When Sisera looked at her and said, well, you're under your palm tree and you want me to go to war? If you don't go, I'm not going. Deborah could have been discouraged by that. She could have felt that he was disrespectful and she could have just said, you know what? I'm just not doing this. But no, she was persistent. She knew what God was calling her to do, and she determined in her mind that she was going to see it through. So, brothers and sisters, as as you hear this message today, I want to assure you that if you have faith in God, he is going to bring you through. And stay focused. Stay focused on the plan. Don't let anything deter you from following what it is that God is asking you to do. Don't forget also that when he's done it, to give him the praise. He's the one that deserves the praise. He's the one that deserves the honor and all of the glory. Amen? Amen. But you may be saying that, well, you know, I I don't pray. I, I don't know God. Well, maybe it's time for you to get to know God. Maybe it's time for you to have that relationship with God. All you have to do is believe on him and trust in him. The Bible says that we're all sinners, right? We have sinful hearts and we deserve punishment because of our sinful hearts. Romans 6 and 23 says the wages of sin is death. And that is what we deserve. But praise God that he sent a savior, Jesus Christ, who paid the penalty for our sins. He died so that we can live. And the Bible says that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So Christ can save you. 
the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. So if you have not done that, I'm just going to ask you to say this prayer with me right now. Just close your eyes and just say this prayer. Repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you today confessing my sins. Father, please save me. Father, I believe that Jesus is your son, that he died for my sins, and that you raised him from the dead. I confess with my mouth Jesus as Lord of my life, and I am going to follow you to the end. Amen. And, and, and it's that simple, brothers and sisters. If you have prayed this prayer, you are now a child of God. Please put it in the comments because Pastor Marlon would love to know that you made a profession of faith today. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Phillips, for joining us today and sharing these wonderful lessons. Lesson one, obey God's call. Lesson two, be courageous. Lesson three, have faith. Lesson four, stay focused. And finally, lesson five, give God the praise. Thanks for worshiping with us today. And we pray that you are blessed by the word brought to us today by Deacon Wendy Phillip. Go in God's grace until we meet again for Sunday service and Tuesdays for Bible study from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Be sure to check out our website for more information about our ministry. God bless you. And remember, you're dismissed from this service, but never dismissed from God's presence. <laughs>